Hey everyone, Aaron Stewart, Data Access Golf, the live show. Thought I'd jump on real quick and talk to you a little bit about um, some really cool stuff that happened over the weekend. And it's about learning and it's about being in the right mindset to learn quickly. Um, it was a cool experience. I was looking forward to, obviously we had Data Monday and, and then I, had a, I did a pretty cool podcast I thought yesterday on playing out of the sand. And, and then didn't actually get to go live yesterday, ran out of time. But today we will do it and talk about it, and I think you will enjoy it. Let's get going. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me here on Data Access Golf. Appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, so I had a really cool thing. Kind of read the description. We're talking a little bit about learning and making, that, making sure that we are in the right place to learn properly. Obviously, the golf swing is over like that, right? We start back, it comes down, and it's such a blur. Literally, when we get to about right here and it goes behind our head, this all becomes like no man's land, right? Like. Fred Shoemaker always calls it a blind spot. Like we don't know exactly what's going on with grip and arm and everything back there. And so we have to do a lot of learning to make sure that we kind of understand what's going on back there, which is, which is really important. Um, a lot of that has to do with making sure that we get out of our own way. A lot of that has to make sure that we're in the right place so we can experience our golf swing and kind of figure out what is really going on as opposed to our... I don't know what it is about the golf swing, but, but we literally make so many misjudgments about what we're doing that I, I think for a lot of folks, it freaks us out. We have a, a, a really good friend of ours who we played a lot of golf with growing up, and he, had, um, um, he, he could hit a long way. I mean, he had long, long levers, as we like to say, and he could really move it out there a long way, but he had a, a bit of a unique move. And so the... Um, this friend of ours went to a golf school and they actually videotaped his swing. And it was the first time that he had seen his swing on video. And he came back uh, to us very upset that his golf swing looked like this. And he was just furious with us. And uh, he was letting us kind of have it. And he said, how in the world could you guys, you know, let this happen? How in the world would you not tell me my swing looked like this? And our response to him was like, you know, dude, we thought you knew. You know, we thought you that we thought you knew how you looked. Now he had no idea. And I think a lot of us have no idea um, how we look. We think in our own minds that we look like, you know, Rory McIlroy. And uh, we don't. We don't look anything close to Rory McIlroy. Um, but that's what we've got in our heads, and we believe that those are the motions we're making. And, and based on a lot of amateur videos that I've seen over the years, we have no clue, right, on what we're doing. And anyway, so I had this really cool opportunity. My daughter, as I've mentioned, wants to make the high school golf team, and so we're going to work hard on it. We're going to make sure that she does it. I did the same thing for my two boys. They wanted to make the golf team, and so we worked really hard and got them on that golf team. Uh, the first year they were both on it, they, they won state, which is kind of fun, right? They get, they get the big rings and they get to feel good about winning a, a state championship and playing in state, which was something, uh, you know, I never did. I was on a golf team in high school and I was terrible. I never played on a, a team. Our, our golf team actually wasn't quite a good team. I never played in state. So it's really cool to have children that have accomplished more in golf in the high school level than I ever did. Right. That's fun. That's always kind of the goal as a parent is to get your kids beyond where you were. And they both got to do that. And it was exciting to watch and nerve wracking, absolutely nerve wracking to watch them play in state and following them. And anyway, so um, anyway, I had my daughter out. We went out to the range on Saturday. It was a little cooler than I like. I didn't hit any balls. I just kind of tried to focus on her. I ran into a good friend of mine and helped him with his swing a little bit. 
and then got to work with my daughter. And as we got back into it, again, we, we have these horrible long winters here in Utah. And so it can be six, seven months between when you actually play golf. Sometimes, depending on how the spring goes, we've had a very wet and cold spring. And so there just hasn't been a lot, and, and we're fair weather golfers. If it's not warm, I mean, this was by far cooler than what we like to go out in. I mean, if it's not 75 degrees, the Stewart clan doesn't really like to be outside, right? So we're fair weather golfers for sure. And anyway, so we were out on the tee. It was a little cooler. I think it was in the mid 60s, but she is dedicated and wants to get into golf and make the golf team and kind of polish up her game. And she's always been a very uh, talented player. She's always been the one that um, loved to jump on the golf cart with me and go to the range and would film me when she was even little. Um, we've got a lot of videos, uh, you know, from a very low perspective because she was just a little thing, but she was always super helpful and very interested and loved to hang out. We love to hang out on the golf course together. So it was fun. It was kind of, we, we've been out and played so far this year, but it was the first time we got on the range and really had this opportunity to kind of dig in and see where her swing was. And it, it definitely gotten rusty. She had definitely um, picked up a few things that we were going to have to, to work on. But the one thing that I noticed right out of the bat is that she started warming up and hitting a few balls. And again, I was over, I was over helping my friend. So I was kind of watching her from behind so she couldn't see me watching her. And I could see her exasperation as she kept hitting shots that weren't going anywhere. They weren't going where she wanted to be. I could see her shoulders slump. I could see her head hang down. And she was getting super disappointed in her performance. I'm like, okay, that's, that's the first thing we're going to fix right now when I get over there. So I helped my buddy and, and we talked a little bit and I went back over there. She'd, she'd had some time to, to warm up a couple minutes. And I said, okay, how's it going? You know, and she's like, ah, I can't hit anything. I can't go anywhere. I can't get their ball off the ground. And she's super frustrated. And um, I said, okay, hit a few. And we looked at it, looked at a couple things. And, and, and she was getting more and more upset. And so I just had a, a nice little moment with her. And I said, look, honey, it, it does, the whole time we're here, it does not matter where that ball goes. I don't care. And you shouldn't care where that ball goes. We're not here to learn how to hit a golf ball. We're here to learn how to swing a golf club. The golf balls, the golf ball will do what it's told as soon as it's told what to do properly. And right now, we're not worried about the golf swing. You're only worried about where this golf ball is going. Folks, that is one of the worst ways to learn to play golf. It's only worry about the golf ball. And I'll tell you why, because once watching her, she got to a place where she was so upset, there was absolutely no, no way for her to be creative and feel anything and learn anything. And if it goes back to, um, I, I don't want to send everybody back into to, to college, but we have this whole hierarchy of needs. Um, Mavlov kind of came up with this whole, uh, uh, Mavlov came up with this whole idea of this hierarchy of needs. And whether it's accurate or not is up for debate. There's a lot of scientists that bounce that around and talk about it. But essentially, you've got basic needs, you've got psychological needs, and unless those are met, there's no way for you to learn or be creative or anything. And so if you are down here feeling uh, threatened and upset and you're <laughs> cursing and you're mad at yourself, you've got no opportunity to come up here and learn a darn thing. You're just hanging out down here and your basic needs aren't being met and, and you are a disastrous student at that point. You can hit an entire bucket of balls and learn zero hanging out in that very fight or flight ticked off place, mentally checked out essentially. You're just so ticked off and so upset because of where the ball's going on a range for heaven's sakes that you cannot allow the learning to take place. You can't even check in to know what you're doing. You still have no idea what's going on around you. You just know that the ball's not going where you want it to. And the reason it's not is because you are not presenting the club in a manner to get the ball going where you want it to. And you're not willing to work on the part that makes that happen because you're so freaked out and tied up to this golf ball going where you want it to that everything else is off the table. And that's the facts, Jack, right? So my daughter was there. That's who she was. This was the golfer she had become at this particular moment. So we had a nice little chat about it. 
Um, and, and I had, I, we tried to, to get her to think about other things rather than the golf, go, go, golf ball going anywhere. And we've done it since she was little. So she understood what I meant. And she tried to divorce herself from where the ball was going. And, and because we've practiced it, she did really well. Um, and she started to hit the ball really quite well. She hit the ball great, actually. I mean, she put some really good moves on the ball. We've got a lot of work to do. But as far as her getting to a place where she was presenting the club in a way where the ball would go, we got her outside experiencing things where she could be connected to a target and try to get things going that direction. And so what I wanted to do is kind of show you how cool it worked out. When we started, she was really upset and having a hard time and doing all that. We worked on a few things and we've got a, we've got a long way to go, obviously, with the golf swing. And I don't want you to be judgy, judgy to my sweet little daughter here. But I do want you to see how amazing it was. Now, I'll tell you that when we started, and maybe I should have queued that up. When we started, she was having a real hard time getting the club anywhere to the back of the ball. I mentioned that. Well, watch what happened here. Once we divorced her from where the ball's going, and I told her, hey, I want you to pay attention to what's going on back here. I want you to tell me. I was literally saying to her, when we started, she was rising up when she got to the top of her backswing quite a bit, a couple inches, and then coming back down too low, hitting some things fat, or not going down far enough and hitting some things, hitting some balls thin. And we've talked a little bit about that. Um, and I said, okay, do you feel your head moving? She had no idea. She was so upset that she, there was no way for her to experience anything. Um, and just because she was so focused on where this ball was going. Uh, once we got her divorced from that, and, and then I could start asking her, hey, how's your head? Is it moving? And she could say, yeah, it moved half an inch. Well, that's unbelievable to be able to feel that. Is your, how's your club at the top? Uh, I think I'm over swinging. Excellent. Before she had no idea where her club was stopping. Um, so we, we began to get into a place where she could experience her golf swing from a very realistic, from, from a real place, not made up, not up, not made up and not running through some camouflage that the brain's putting up. We, we've got a very limited amount of time after a golf swing to hang out with it. That's something that Fred Shoemaker always talks about, that we have this ability to experience a golf swing, and then we've only got a little, little, bit, a little amount of time for us to kind of take it all in and understand what went on. And if we don't take advantage of that, learning is zilch. It's not going to happen. Um, anyway, so let me bring this up real quick. Let me see if I hope it still works. Okay, cool. There she is. Okay, I want to show you what, what, this, what this did for her, this exercise of divorcing herself from the ball. Um, she, start, she comes way inside, and I'll show you that. She starts to swing way inside, and we're going to have to work on that. The club's fanned wide open. We're going to have to work on that, but that's not a big deal. That's actually pretty easy to fix. I'm not too concerned about it, and I'll tell you why I'm not too concerned about it. Because once she got out of her own way, See that white line right there? That's pointed right at the ball. You'll see that I move a little bit. Watch how early she finds that plane line. She's got the club back. She overswings a little bit. She makes a start down. Boom, 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 boom. She makes a start. Look at that. Look where that club is on that plane line. Okay, she had gotten to a place in her mind where she wasn't worried about the ball and where the ball was going. She was just hanging out with her golf swing. And look how early she found the plane line. I mean, it's what? Two clicks into this thing? She has nailed it right there. She has absolutely found it. She's on top of it. And all she has to do now is drop that club down that line and hit the ball, which she does. Boom. Hits the ball and brings it up. We've got some work to do, obviously. But how beautiful is that? To, to find the plane line so early because she is aware of, she is hanging out with herself. She is being, she is being uh, present to where her club is, to what she's doing, whether her head's moving or not. That's where she's hanging out. And because of that, she, I had asked her this swing, I just want you to focus on your head. What is your head doing? And she was able to tell me that her head actually did a really good job there and then dropped down when she came into the club. She experienced that and she wouldn't be able to experience that any other way. Sorry, folks, I'm not answering your phone call. In fact, we will just go right back here. So that's what I wanted to get uh, to talk with you about today. As when you go out to hit a bucket of balls, please, 
if you start hitting a bunch of, of, uh, of you know, worm burners and rolling them off the tee and shanking and whatever, it's not the ball. It's that you are not experiencing your golf swing. You are so focused on where that ball's going that it's life or death for you. And you've now shoved yourself down to fight or flight. You don't feel safe. You're feeling embarrassed. You don't understand what's going on. You hope nobody's watching you hit the golf ball. And from there, there is no way to experience creativity, learning, none of that. It all goes out, it all goes out the window. You, don't have a, you, you are not in a spot where you can learn what's actually going on. You will not be able to find plane to be connected to where your target is and be connected to a plane line if you are pissed off about where your ball's going off the tee. It's impossible. And yet if you do free your mind, you will find your golf swing. You will find plane. You will be connected to the target and your plane line and everything uh, very much more readily and much more quickly. And you will be able to experience your golf swing in a very real sense and stop making up excuses to stop being fr frustrated. One of the best things you can do is get to a, uh, a range and, and honestly start your practice this way. Hit a, hit a couple low burners just for fun and get it out of your system. Don't be tied to the fact that every single shot has to be a big, beautiful high draw because you're worried about everybody else watching about you. You cannot learn from that place. Ditch it, dump it. Uh, Fred Shoemaker is by far the most amazing coach when it comes to that aspect of it. There's, not, there's no way I would have been able to understand it and there's no way I would have been able to share it with my kids and have them come along so quickly in this great game. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. If it does not, please drop me a line, send me a question. We'll talk about it some more. Get, get to a place where you can enjoy the experience of a golf swing and forget about where the ball's going, especially on the range. Uh, who cares? They're just gonna run around on a stupid little golf cart and pick them up anyway. You're not trying to put them in a little spot for them. Let them go wherever they go and let's really experience what's going on in our golf swing, learn from it, figure out what's actually going on and become better golfers. Until next time, Aaron Stewart saying better data always means better golf and thanks for geeking out on golf with me today. Thanks.